At this point, we've taken care of 34 out of 77 items. And that's all we're going to cover in this tutorial because most of the rest of the stuff here is either very easy or very self-explanatory or a bit more advanced than what we're going to get into. But I am going to take a quick run through some of the items we haven't discussed so you have an idea of what some of these more possibly confusing items are. I'd also like to point out that just like how we didn't necessarily want to have every single piece of content get a 100% perfect rating when we were using the Yoast module, it's also okay to not do every single thing listed in the SEO checklist. In fact, very seldom will a site complete 100% of these. Think of these as general guidelines that can give your site an additional SEO boost, not mandatory actions that have to be done for you to be found in search engines. So breadcrumbs is fairly self-explanatory. Then we have the RDF UI module, which ties into schema.org schemas. This might be a little bit more confusing. RDF UI allows you to set schema.org schemas on your content. Now, this is really a topic of its own, but in short, schema.org defines markup that you can add to your HTML to give search engines a better idea of what your content is about. You can go to schema.org to learn more about what this is and how to implement it. Then we have the Linkit module. With the Linkit module installed and configured, when you or other users on your site are adding content, the module makes the process of adding links in your content a little easier, but also it helps to make sure that any link included in that content is formed properly. This is good because improperly formed links are bad for SEO. After that, we have the Editor Advanced Link module. When you're creating content using CK Editor, Drupal 8's core WYSIWYG module, and you add a link, this module allows you to set the attributes of that link, such as its ID, class, title, target, and the rel attribute. Make sure you get this module and not the one simply called Advanced Link, which is a different module. Now let's go over to Page Optimization. Create new revisions isn't a module. This is just a core setting in Drupal 8 that you're probably familiar with. It allows you to save each new edit on any individual piece of content as another revision so that you can go back and look through the history of all the revisions of any type of any single piece of content. This is good for SEO because if you ever notice that a page's views have gone up or down since editing a page or a piece of content, then if you have had revisions turned on, you can go back and see what changes you made, and this gives you useful info to use. The diff module simply allows you to quickly see the differences between any two versions of a node to assist with analyzing these node revisions. Let's go over to security and performance now. The security review module runs tests on your website to make sure you aren't doing anything that's dangerous from a security standpoint. Search engines are really good at noticing some types of security flaws and will dock your site if you have any such flaws. Down here, it suggests that we use HTTPS on our website. Now this is especially important if you have visitors logging into your site in any way. HTTPS, if you're not familiar with it, encrypts the traffic to and from your site to make it much, much more difficult for someone to intercept that traffic and find out what some user's password is. Search engines always like to see HTTPS, but it's really bad if people can log in, aside from just admins, and you're not using HTTPS. Performance admin settings simply refers to Drupal Core's own performance settings that you can access at any time. Configure image styles, what this is referring to is that you just want to make sure that you're loading properly sized images on your web pages, and you're not trying to send images that are unreasonably large in file size. Smaller sized files help your page speed, which in turn helps your SEO. Set up a CDN. This is referring to a content delivery network for your website itself. The short version of this is that if you use a CDN service like Cloudflare, as is suggested here, you can have your site served from multiple servers. Now this can decrease server load and it can also speed up the loading of your site because often CDNs can tell which of the multiple servers it's delivering from are geographically closer to the person trying to access your site. So it will try to send them your web page from the closest server if possible. This speed boost is good for SEO, but usually CDNs are only used by high traffic sites. So if you wanna forego this option, that's not gonna kill you at all. 
Here over on mobile and social, you want to make sure your website is responsive. This just means that you want to make sure your website is using a theme that is responsive. In other words, that will conform to the size of the screen that the person is using so that if they're viewing your website from a mobile device, for instance, they don't have to do the pinch and zoom. Search engines really like to see responsive websites and they will dock you if your site is not responsive. Then we have this AMP stuff here. Now, AMP defines special kinds of markup to use in your HTML, sort of similar to schema, but AMP serves a different purpose. It's designed to make your web pages load quickly on mobile devices. Now, as you can see here, the installation process here is a bit more involved as you need the module and the PHP library, which you have to install via Composer. The theme will provide AMP-based templates for your site, which you can then create sub-themes of if you'd like. So obviously AMP takes a bit of work to get going with, and it is considered a tool for slightly advanced users. If you don't feel like you have the time or the expertise to use AMP, it's definitely not gonna kill you to leave it out, but at the same time, it can be a really good boost for your site. Again, there are a lot of items here, and our goal is not to do every single thing listed. Rather, we want to take care of the things we are capable of and the things that make sense for our site. Most developers will leave stuff out to varying degrees, and that's perfectly fine. Think of these as suggestions rather than requirements for improving your Drupal 8 site's SEO.